What's going on, guys? Happy New Year. Happy 2023. It's been a second since we've talked. I actually was in Hawaii for a couple weeks. I took two drones with me. This guy was in for repair, got replaced. This is a Light Plus. I had my Mavic 3 with me. I had my Mini 3 Pro. I figured those two drones alone were enough to do what I needed. I didn't want to go to Hawaii to specifically get a ton of footage. I wanted to capture some beauty, of course, which I did. And I'm going to tell you my pick for drone of 2022, meaning drone of the year. That's a big claim, I know, but I'm going to give you my input. I've been all over the place. I had a Mavic 3 Cine when it first came out. It crashed. I had a horrible experience with it. But I've kind of come full circle with the Mavic 3, and I'll explain a little bit about that. I got a new kitten. His name is Cosmos. He's a black little guy I adopted. My Humane Society is right in my backyard, essentially. So I've been really busy with a little crazy kitten. I don't know if he's around. Let me see. I got Simon, my Siamese, and he is my king and my number one. But this little guy, we'll see if he makes a cameo appearance. He's super cute, all black with really beautiful yellow eyes. So needless to say, I've been busy with babysitting cats. <laughs> so in Hawaii, basically I've been all over the place with my drones. I've had Evo 2 Pro 6Ks. I've had the Evo 2 6K Enterprise. The Enterprise I had a lot of issues with because I was using the regular standard remote and not the smart controller. I think there is some kind of issue not using the smart controller. So I was having a lot of disconnects and just a really miserable experience. Again, polar opposite from the Evo 2 Pro standard. The Evo 2 Pro standard was an amazing drone. It kind of flew not anywhere near as well as the Mavic 3, but it was still a great drone and it did the job. And I still believe that Evo 2 Pro 6K is the best photographic drone out there. It takes amazing pictures. The images you get out of the Evo 2 Pro 6K sensor is really amazing. So as a photographer, I still think hands down the Evo 2 Pro 6K version 1, version 2, or version 3 is going to be the best photographic drone for just taking still pictures. Now with that being said, I was really excited about the Mini 3 because I love my Mini 2. The Mini 1 was, you know, the beginning drone. It had really bad transmission with the Wi-Fi. But this guy I was really excited about because I loved my Mini 2, as I said, and it can get really beautiful footage in such a small footprint. And it's cool. I mean, I think the neatest thing about this drone is the fact that it's so unassuming and it's so cute and people really, really are excited to see it because it's so quiet and it's just not an intimidating drone. Let me get this gimbal cover off. Do, do, do put that aside and as you can see the camera is right over here it looks really like a frog or something it has a personality of its own so again the psychology utilizing this drone to get shots in say a crowded area or flying low just getting some cool b-roll with the camera going vertically or raising really high up because of this little recess area adds a lot of creativity and a lot of options creatively to getting cool footage but using the Mavic 3 for a while for a job I had a company send me one and I was using it for a while I realized honestly this thing is such a great drone minus this gimbal cover they should do something to make this a lot slicker looking for a drone this cool they should have a see-through thing to see the gimbal or a camera but regardless this drone hands down, is drone of the year for 2022, in my humble opinion. I thought this would be maybe the more innovative kind of drone, but for everyday usage and the ability to fly in winds, when I was in Hawaii, we have a lot of winds there, and it's really gusty and just stormy kind of situations where you got a high tail back, and the ability to see this thing a little bit better than the minis, because they're so small, I flew this 90% of the time. I barely even flew this because I just didn't need to. I didn't want to. And it honestly was not the best or the safest choice for getting the shots that I needed in the conditions that I was shooting in. So at the fly, this thing is capable of everything I need 
I don't even need the Cine. I honestly wouldn't mind having ProRes ability, but I had the issue of my SSD in the Cine failing on me, so there was that. And for the price, a couple thousand dollars, hands down with the seven times zoom. The seven times zoom in this thing is amazing. If you know how to use it and fly really slowly and cinematically and get some kind of really nice parallax effects kind of things, it can be awesome just for great B-roll with an optical seven times zoom. So I would not go for the classic, that's me, because I think the hero part of this drone is the second lens. As odd as that is for me to say, because I didn't think the second lens was really anything more than novelty, but as I've flown it a lot more with the firmware updates, and now it actually is an amazing killer drone. It was not like that when I flew my Cine. It was very still in beta testing kind of days, but spending a lot more time with this drone. This drone is capable of all my needs. I honestly don't need any of these drones. This thing can do basically all, minus the geofencing side. So realistically, I would own a Mavic 3 and maybe some Autel, even if it was a Mano Plus. So between this and a backup drone, of course, these are really great combos with the RC controller because you can use the RC controller for both of these. So that's a nice combo, but I would rather have the Mavic 3 and one Autel so I have my no geofencing needs met in case I ever do run into a situation where I want to launch and I just want to get a shot legally, of course, within the 107 standards and guidelines. But this drone, again, drone of the year, I thought this was going to be my choice for saying drone of the year with, as I said, innovation wise and just the overall coolness factor. But even though it's a great capable drone to me, it's almost novelty compared to this guy. This guy is a pro. It can do anything you need. And yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. My realistic side of shooting jobs recently, I've been using this all the time and it just does a great job so i don't know i mean this light plus has not been super impressive the nanos i didn't really love them but they did get good footage the nano plus when i look back at some of the shots and some of the footage it really is an amazing little drone and sensor out of something that's small in my opinion it actually does a little bit better job than the mini 3 and the Mini 2, of course, but the Mini 2, I'll still always keep. I have one sitting in a case, brand new, basically. So the Mini 2 is an amazing drone. And if you guys are looking for a beginner entry-level drone, I don't think there's a need to necessarily go to the Mini 3 Pro or even the Mini 3. I think the Mini 2 and rocking that thing out to its abilities is really a great way to learn and you don't have to spend a ton of money. So... I just wanted to talk a teeny bit about my drone choice and why I kind of came full circle from absolutely having a nightmare situation with the Cine flying into a building and losing sight of it and that whole ordeal to actually falling really in love with it and being hands down my drone, my go-to drone when I'm going to fly any kind of job. And as I said, just being in Hawaii, this drone was all I needed to shoot surf, to shoot pipeline, to shoot whatever it is. It has the sport mode. It has the ability to break through any kind of winds. It handles. It does a great job getting great footage. You have the C4K. You have 4K. You have you know, 5K. It just does everything you need minus the ProRes. And if you did want ProRes, obviously you opt for the Cine version, which is going to be that much more. I really wish DJI would offer some of this stuff more individually so I didn't have to buy maybe the Cine drone with the filters and the bag and a lot of stuff that I didn't necessarily want. You know, like the RC Pro, for example. I would rather just buy the Cine like this in a basic package for maybe $3,200. I would have spent another $1,000 to have the ProRes option, but I opted to get this for now. And who knows, I sold my Inspire 2. That thing is gone, so I'm glad that is out of the mix because that was just a very big cumbersome drone. I shot some jobs with it, you know, a couple $3,500 jobs and a couple larger and smaller jobs, but it wasn't really something 
that I was finding myself utilizing. And it was so much footprint dragging around this big drone. And if I brought that to Hawaii, yeah, I could have gotten some cool stuff, but you know what? Hawaii is a tough place to fly because of the military stuff and just being a lot of local spaces. You just don't want to be that kind of loud when you're flying. I don't want to have this big drone. Yeah, it's cool in theory, but you're bringing a lot of attention to yourself and to get the footage that I really need. Any of these drones are great. This is still a great drone. The Mini 3 is awesome. The Light Plus is still a great drone as well, but it's just not super exciting. If I were to have my way, I would probably have ideally the Cine of this the Mini 3 Pro, and maybe an Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K. Those would be my drone choices if I had three drones to keep in my bag at all times. So, yeah, that's about it. I mean, the thing I don't really enjoy about the Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K version 3 is that you're forced to use the smart controller, which I personally am not a big fan of. I think Autel should have given us an option to use an iPhone. I'm using my iPhone 13 Pro Max to film this, so I can't show you. But I think there should always be an option. It shouldn't be forced upon us to use a smart controller, even though in theory, that's the better of the choices. I still think we should have a basic phone choice and then a smart controller choice. So ideally, Autel would acknowledge that. But I don't know if there's ever going to be an Evo 3 Pro or what that's going to be about. We just got that new Max released, but that's an enterprise drone. That's not a drone that I'm going to need for more cinematic work. So. Yeah, anyway guys, happy 2023. I don't know, Simon, where do you see Kitty Kitty? So this is Cosmos. Welcome to the YouTube world and say hello to everyone. Three months and probably wanting to get down and go back to sleep, but really, really loving. Rescued them from, yes, you wanna go over here? There you go, play with the drones. And yeah, that's it. So happy New Year's, guys. Hope everyone has a safe, prosperous, healthy 2023. I'm going to start to do more videos soon. I was kind of in a big funk with a lot of stuff. As I said, I kind of dealt with a lot of anxiety, depression stuff, and my mom with dementia, and there's loads of life coming at you. So went to Hawaii, got a little decompression there, and the holidays have passed. We haven't had sun for like two weeks really frustrating not good for me I don't do well with no sun so it's been a challenge and it's hard to get motivated I moved into a new space so I'm here I'm back and we will hopefully get past 4,000 subscribers not that it's all about that but I will share more content and do some more reviews and talk story about more drones but let me know if you have anything you want to talk about and see a video on and we'll go from there so that's it guys aloha bye